Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you guys saw my last video, it was a haul, uh, you may know that there are quite a few new doll releases this year. And I mean, this year has been just terrible, but that's been like a very nice positive. Um, and if you watch that video, then you know that I've picked up quite a few of those doll releases because I like dolls. So <laughs> uh, one of the dolls that I picked up was a Cave Club doll. And at this point, I've picked up like three Cave Club dolls because I kind of really like them. But we're going to be painting one of those today. If y'all don't know about the Cave Club dolls, I mean, they're pretty great. They're 10 inches. I think they're like $10. They're fully articulated. Um, their proportions are adorable. Like they have a big head, big ears, big calves, big feet. I, they look like little garden gnomes or something. I don't know. I'm just here for it. Um, I've also never seen a doll of this scale that is fully articulated. I decided to make her into a candy themed doll. This is very inspired by an artist on Instagram named Oscar Magic Doll. If you guys haven't seen his repaints, they're honestly some of my favorite that I've ever seen. Um, and he has a series, I guess it's a series, that uh, he makes like candy themed girls or candy dolls or whatever. Um, and they're beautiful. So I wanted to kind of make a doll in the similar vein to that. Around the time that I decided I wanted to make this doll, Arteza actually asked me if I wanted to try out more of their products and do a giveaway of one of their products. And I said, uh, sure. <laughs> so I'm going to be reviewing three more of their products in this video. And I'm also going to be giving away, well, Arteza and I are going to be giving away one of the products that I've tried already, which is the 72 count watercolor pencils. At first I asked them if we could give away the 120 count because that's actually the product that I reviewed in my Fairy Queen video, but unfortunately that was out of stock. So this seemed like the second best thing. I wanted to pick an item that I knew would be really practical for doll artists and also something that I really enjoy. So if you guys want to enter this giveaway, please refer to the description box for all of the rules. Um, I figured I'd just write them down there instead of trying to like stammer through reading them. So yeah, look down there. There's definitely some very specific rules. So please refer to that. With all that being said, on to prepping the doll. The head was already really squishy, so I didn't need to heat it up to take it off. I already mentioned my love for these bodies, but these bodies are so good, especially, I mean, if you want to do something of this scale, like I think this is the only articulated, super kind of small body that I've seen on the market. Maybe I'm wrong. I know that there's like Obitsu bodies and those are like small and really articulated, but they're kind of like, you know, toddler type dolls. And this is like, I guess more of a mature doll and I'm just here for it. it looks so good anyway I cut all her hair off put it in hot water to warm up the glue and now I'm scraping around her head with a screwdriver to get the glue out from her head the neck hole was like too small so I had to cut a slit into the back of her head and pull the glue chunks out through the back of her head with needle nose pliers Now see her little cutie pie scope. So I take 100% acetone and I just wipe around her face with a cotton ball. Oh my God, this is so cute. Like her face is so cute. It's so cute. I wanna shrink one of these heads because I feel like it would make like a totally different sort of feel for this type of doll, if it had like more of a proportionate head. Like it's really cute having a big head, but like I feel like, it's, I don't know. I just want to see what it looks like, honestly. <laughs> I'm painting her scalp white because we're going to be rerouting it. And I completely forgot to sew up the giant gaping hole in the back of her head. Uh, so I'm doing that now. Honestly, it wasn't entirely the most necessary because of the way I'm going to be doing her hair. But I'm just sewing it up with a giant needle and needle nose pliers um, in the same way that you would sew clothes, basically. Onto the hair. So I wanted that like chunky, yarny, ribbony, cotton candy quality 
uh, that Oscar Magic's dolls have on his candy girls. So that's what I'm going to be trying to achieve. So I just got all of my pastel yarn. I got some pretty ribbon. I got some pearls. I got this big chunky purple yarn, but we don't end up using that. Um, I'm just rerouting all of these into the hairline. We're only doing the hairline because her hair is going to be up in a ponytail. I'm only doing her hairline because if I rerouted her whole head, it would just be way too much hair. Like her ponytail would be way too large and in charge. It would just look crazy. <laughs> This is the end result and it's just, <laughs> it's really adorable. <laughs> like, come on now, look at that. So cute. I mean, cute in terms of like, aside from the big old ball spot she got in the middle of her head, but don't worry about that. We're going to be covering that up. I spray the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray to let it dry. I'm wearing a respirator mask and now we're on to the face up. I start with the eyes like I usually do. Um, I wanted her eyes to be a little bit smaller than the sculpt that they have. So I'm just sketching them in slightly smaller. They're still huge though. For blushing, I go in with light pink first and a fluffy brush and I kind of just put those that on like the cheeks, on the nose, the forehead, the chin and I sort of apply it a little bit sloppy and then I take a smaller brush and a darker red pastel and I apply that in a more concentrated way. With deep brown pastels, I shade around her nose, her eyes, and her mouth. I apply light blue all over the face and some people will hate that I do this, <laughs> but I swear once I spray it like 400 times, like, I don't do 400 sprays. How many sprays do I do? I think if I had to ask me, I do like 12 maybe. Um, after spraying it that many times, like you really, like it's very dulled down by the time I'm done the face up. With a light blue pencil, I am sketching in some branch like marks to mimic veins around her eyes and her forehead. I colored her eyes in purple and they just end up looking pink by the end of this because that just seems to happen whenever I like draw in eyes purple. They just are like blue, pink, like they just are not purple and I don't know. I guess it's a character flaw with me. I just can't seem to give a doll purple eyes. I'm trying though. To give the eyes more of a gradient from like dark to light, I take a dark purpley pink pastel and a Q-tip and I kind of just like fade that into the lighter purple. This is probably where it started to turn pink because <laughs> um, that is a very pinky purple, Jackie. I don't know what you was thinking. You got other dark purples you could have used, but that I think this is where it all went wrong. 
I find painting big eyes like this, you'd think it would be like a more comfortable sort of pleasant experience since I'm painting so many like monster high heads that are like really tiny and they have to get like tiny eyes and stuff. Or I guess, you know, if you're painting in my style, they sort of do. Um, and that actually like painting big eyes makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I'm just so not used to it. Like I'm genuinely like comfortable painting my super tiny eyes. I painted like two really tiny heads recently and like I feel like that was easier than painting this big head, which is just strange. With white watercolor paint, I add highlights all around her eyes and her lips. I decided to give her white eyebrows because I thought the color that stood out the most in her hair was white. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be trying out and reviewing some of Arteza products in this video. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is this 60 count mica powder kit and it comes with so many shades like so many shades um basically i mean i think like every shade you could really want in a micro powder the cool thing about these is that they're actually cosmetic grade so you can put them on your eyes which i don't know about you but i wear tons of makeup so i might try that sometime um i tried swatching them dry at first but like that wasn't happening because this is computer paper so, like i don't know it just wasn't having it so i wet them and i decided to swatch them that way and i mean they're great, <laughs> like they're beautiful, look at them. Um, I like to use these around the face in certain areas. So there's one called Crystal White that I'm gonna be showing you, this one right here. Um, I like putting, this is like a chunky white glitter. I really like how this type of pigment looks when you put it all over the skin, it just gives it a really nice sparkly quality. Then I took Bubblegum Glow, which is like a duochrome pink, and I put that on the cheekbones. These are Arteza's metallic watercolors. Um, I just took a like purpley shade and I put that on the pupils. I know I've talked about how kind of important it is to have tiny brushes when it comes to repainting dolls. Um, but I'm just going to reiterate it. I have some of like the tiniest brushes I've ever found in my description box. If you guys want to see those and you want like my recommendation for super tiny brushes. Um, I've heard people use nail art brushes and I've tried those. I don't like them. I don't think that they're quite small enough. Um, I know that they work for like quite a few people and I think that's great. If it works for you, fantastic. But I don't think that they're quite small enough for me. Um, and my cat is so damn loud and the way that i like to paint lines um or maybe like i can't get the nail brushes to work because i suck i don't know that's also a possibility but yeah the tiniest brushes i've been able to find in the description box if you want some recommendations i've mentioned this also before but i use watercolor paint instead of acrylic because i just find that um it's way easier to take off uh, with water and a q-tip if you mess up and <laughs> your girl messes up a lot so I just take things off and um, that works out the best because if you use acrylic like and it dries you have to like scratch it off and I don't know about you but that's a little too much for me I don't want to be scratching my artwork So I know a lot of people have trouble with lashes. Um, I feel like the best tip that anyone can give is to have an incredibly sharp pencil. I've seen people draw lashes on with little nubbins and 
I'm not saying I'm judging you, but I'm judging you like, yeah, your lash is going to look whack if you have like a little nubby pencil. So sharpen it as well as you can. I know some people use a knife. I use a pencil sharpener and I just sharpen it really slowly. Um, I also go over the lashes when I'm done sketching them in with paint, uh, watercolor paint. So again, those tiny brushes, I'm just saying, I recommend them <laughs> in the description box. I tap a bit of the rose pink pigment on the lips and cheeks. To brighten up the pupil, I take bright blue and I just tap that with a Q-tip onto the pupil. I took a little bit of gloss and applied that to the lips. I stopped applying gloss to my doll's eyes just so that I can like take photos of them. Um, because when you put the gloss on the eyes, it's really hard to capture all the details of the eyes when the gloss is there. I decided to be real extra with this doll's face, so I took some Elmer's glue all, put that on the pupil, and then I took a little uh, glitter and I put that on top of the pupil. And it looks so stinking cute. Drew, I've like tried this before in the past and I feel like this was m the most effective pupil glitter experience I've had. Maybe because the eyes are bigger. I said no no no. She needs more glitter. So I took some more Elmer's glue all and glitter chunks and I just added those to her cheeks. If you guys are gonna glue glitter to your doll, um please use glue all. I used super glue at one point and like it almost ruined a doll. <sighs> That was that wasn't fun. Um, but yeah, Elmer's glue all is awesome because it dries just it dries clear. So yeah, it's great. I bought a big bag of like um, ice cream cone, plastic things, and like candy plastic things. Um, off of Amazon and they're just very useful. So I'm just hot gluing these to her head Typically, I might not hot glue it to her head. I say that I hot glue a lot of stuff <laughs> and, um, Her hair is not supposed to come out of this hairdo because she has like a giant bald spot in her head. So um, That's how I'm justifying hot gluing stuff to her hair Yeah, <laughs> I also hot glued some like little pearls and rhinestones up there as well. I Decided her hairline was like real square because it is. Um, so I'm just painting on some white baby hairs. I decide she also needs gold freckles on her face, so I'm just putting some little metallic gold dots on the middle of her face. I decided to make her a simple roughly dress. Um, I'm going to be using these Arteza metallic fabric paints for this dress. It comes with 14 shades and as you can see there is like a nice variety. These are opaque. They take to the fabric really well. They're like a nice, they have like a nice pearly quality. Um, 
I mean, I really like them. I think that they do everything that you would want like a metallic fabric paint to do. I used three different shades on the three sets of like tiered ruffles that she's going to have on her dress. The only sort of, not really like a complaint, but maybe a recommendation is I think it would be really cool if there were more pastel shades um, in these metallic fabric paints, or if there was a white shade so that you could make pastel shades, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're great. They're bright. I like them. I hemmed each part of the dress, so the bottom of the skirt, the back pieces where they're going to be connecting the sleeves, and the neckline. I then gather stitch the top of the skirt. I sewed the front and the back of the top together at the shoulders and the side seams. We then gather stitch each one of these strips of fabric. Um, I'm gather stitching them and then I'm sewing them to the skirt of the dress in tiers. To decorate the top, I took a little bit of ribbon and I sewed that to the middle of the top and then I sewed the top to the bottom of the dress. Y'all, I bought this ribbon from Daiso and I've been waiting like a year and a half to use it. Um, so I am sewing this to the bottom of the skirt. I was like, I don't even care if this looks ugly. It's going there because I just want to use this heart ribbon. I sewed the dress up, up the back and then I'm flipping it. I also should probably mention that I sewed some fasteners to the back of the dress on the top area. Um, I also have these pastel buttons that are just too cute. I think everything in this is like too cute. I've said that so many times in this video, but I sewed two of these pastel buttons to the top of the dress. She needed an underskirt, so I took this strip of lace and I just gather stitched it. Sewing is just gather stitching over and over again. Um, <laughs> I'm like a sewing novice and it just feels like that. But yeah, I'm just gather stitching the top of this. We then sew it up the back and put it underneath her dress. Now onto my thoughts of our third and final Arteza product. These are the 30 count 3D fabric paints. I mean, I feel like you, it comes with like every color you could want in a fabric paint. Um, they come with different nozzles so you can get different effects with the fabric paint, which I thought was really cool. I swatched each one of them and I mean, they're pretty great. They're pigmented, they're 3D. I really don't have any complaints, like they do the job. I took the yellow, the pink, and a pearly white shade, and I decided to give her some jimmies on her dress. By the way, does everybody use the word jimmies? Like, I feel like that's like, maybe that's like a Pennsylvania thing. For those of you guys who don't know, I live in Pennsylvania in the United States. Um, but they're sprinkles, okay? So these are sprinkles. Um, and I mean, like, they're 3D. I can get like a pretty thin line with this 3D fabric paint. I feel like the more confident you are when using these, the better it looks. Um, there were a couple where I was like real cautious when doing it and I feel like those jimmies look the worst. But what you can do if your jimmies look bad is you can take some gems and 
Oreos and stuff and you can just hot glue them on top, right? I mean, honestly, I was going to do this anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm just taking some of those Amazon little candy things that I bought and I'm just hot gluing them to the dress to get her whole like candy girl aesthetic going on. I also glued some gems. We're going to be making her socks. So the shoes that I'm using for this doll um, are the Blythe AliExpress shoes. Um, I feel like a lot of people have probably seen them. These fit great for these. However, they're a little tight. So I had to make like a tube for socks. We're basically making the illusion of socks. Um, I took a bit of lace and I sewed that to the top of the sock. And then I made a, a tube by sewing up the back. This is so that I can just tuck this into the shoe. And it makes her look like she has a sock on. But she doesn't actually have a sock on. I guess it's more of like a leg warmer. I wanted the laces of her shoes to be a little bit cuter, so I took some pink ribbon and I just laced her shoes up with that. I decorated the shoes with a cute little pom-pom. Now on to blotty, blotty, excuse me, body blushing. Um, I blushed her body with basically the same tones that I used on the face. I put her head back on and look how cute. <laughs> I need to stop saying cute. I need to find like a synonym for cute. Adorable. Look how adorable. Then we um, curled her front pieces with the metal chopstick method. So I wanted to give her a little accessory, so I gave her a donut bag, and this is very inspired by So Doll Creations bags. Um, I will link her Instagram down below, and she actually has a YouTube that I believe she like started semi recently. Um, sh her bags are cuter than mine, like straight up. Her bag is way cuter than the way I did it. I decided to make it functional, which by the way, like a uh, nightmare. Could you imagine having this as your bag? Because there's a hole in the middle, so you're just constantly trying to like figure out what's in your bag but you can't see the bottom of it because it's it has a hole so it's a curved tube i made the world's most annoying bag i truly did um so go check out so doll creations i believe she sells these patterns for these bags but like the cuter version <laughs> on instagram and by instagram i mean etsy derp <laughs> but yeah so check out check out her bags they're like way cuter than mine i mean listen i wouldn't eat this donut but maybe somebody would um but that's her bag. I'm using the 3D fabric paints to decorate the donut. This is the finished donut bag. I mean, 
it's all right <laughs> and this is actually the finished doll with all of her accessories so i hope you guys like how she turned out um if you guys want to enter the giveaway that arteza and i are doing uh definitely check out the description box for all of the rules I definitely think I want to make another one of these dolls on like a Monster High doll or something just because they're sort of my preference lately. Also, or an Ever After High doll. I like both of those. Um, because it was just really fun to work on. Like the theme was really fun and I really like how the hair turned out. I'm also incredibly excited for you guys to see the Cave Club hybrid body doll that I'm working on right now. Um, I just really like how it's turning out so I'm excited to post it on here. I also wanted to mention that I think it's really cool that this doll can stand by herself. I'm assuming because of the shoes, it makes her feet completely flat, and it's just a really cool aspect. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. Like this video if you like this video. Subscribe, it makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye!